Hi everyone, and welcome back. And I'm with Lynn Morgan. How are you, Lynn? I'm Glad very for well. Glad you to come by. Thank you. And uh, I got your name right. <laughs> I have to apologize to Cecily. I'm sorry. I uh, I don't read out loud when I read the stories until <laughs> late, late, and then I don't know how to pronounce certain things. Anyway, let's go on with uh, you, Lynn. Okay. Okay, now, you're with the Upcountry Community Council. You're going to be having a meeting. You're on the show a lot. Yes. There's a lot of things going on upcountry now that we're starting to thaw out. There are indeed, although we expect possibly a little snow again tomorrow. But, um, okay. but yes, we, uh, we meet the second Monday of every month, so next Monday, the 11th, uh, we'll have our meeting from 6 to 8 at, at, at the Veterans Memorial Hall on Buckhorn Ridge Road in Pioneer. Uh, we will have next Monday um, Chuck Eiley, our county administrative officer, visiting us to uh, talk about the, the budget status, and especially since sequestration deadline has already passed, what possible impacts it may have on our county budget. Okay, at the same time, I think they're coming out with a budget as well. Yes. And this is yes. sequesters hitting about at the same time. Right? Yes. So yes. that'll be good. And uh, so people who want to get some firsthand information, that'd be a good place to go. It would be, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And. Uh, what else is uh, happening up there, or what's going to be on the agenda other oh. than? Okay, on this agenda, uh, another exciting update we have is from Gary Reinel about our upcountry transportation issues. Uh, he sits on the stakeholders group for the Pine Grove Highway 88 corridor project, and they have been having some meetings and public hearings about trying to absolutely firm down an alternative that will be hopefully approved by Caltrans and eventually built. Um, I think I had talked to you a little bit before. One possibility they're they're not going to have um, they're not going to have I can't think of the word, but um, they're going to go through town, <laughs> um, and they're going to try to widen the lanes okay. to three lanes. Okay. And they're going to have either. So we're talking about this is the Pine Grove area. Yes. Okay. Yes, through downtown Pine right, so Grove. So basically, going to use the existing uh, roads, yes. widen where they can, make yes. turning lanes and things. I think I, I had talked to you. There's also some interesting things that might be proposed in that as well as which are, are the uh, roundabouts. Yes. Yes. And it seems like a roundabout. Or, you know, uh, a lot of people or Caltrans seems to want to do those here in Amador County. And I asked you before we came on, on on camera because I was interested myself. I was saying, do you know of any place where we could go drive around on a roundabout here and uh, yes. find out what they feel like? Yes. And the the best place I'm aware of okay. is in Truckee. And I realize it's a little bit of a drive, but um, they have some really interesting ones there on either end of their town. Um, uh, Nevada has quite a few also in Carson City. Uh, I don't, I'm not aware of other Northern California counties and cities that have used them routinely. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break and then we'll come back and we'll continue talking about roundabouts. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. And if you're just joining us, we got to the uh, pleasant part where I was talking with Lynn Morgan, Upcountry Community Council, about roundabouts. And, and they're proposed in quite a lot of uh, Jackson here, uh, possibly Plymouth and the upcountry. And I was wondering, has anybody uh, driven on a roundabout? You know, a long time ago, when I was in the service, I'd been in some roundabouts back east, and they have big roundabouts. I mean, you can get in there and, you know, you just don't come out when you want to. I mean, you have, still have to have a, an opening to be able to get out and go left, or get, not left, but you always go right, but you still have to, I'm not quite sure how it worked, but it seemed to me like we were on one and we went around maybe three or four times <laughs> before we were able to get out. And so when I see them, uh, the pictures that I've seen, you know, there's no cars in the you know in the lane so it would seem oh that would be really easy to get through there but when the traffic's flowing i'm not quite sure how they work so i would like to feel one i was in san diego uh visiting my son and they had uh they had several small roundabouts because they just fit in a regular type of intersection and you just kind of went like you know like that in a in a residential area right you know just homes around right and uh you know well and my understanding is that um that's part of the appeal for Pine Grove because the whole goal of spending this Caltrans money is quieting the traffic. And so if you have to slow down a little bit, you know, to go around that I, my feeling is is if the other people are in it and I you know, I don't I don't know who winds up have, basically anybody in it's got the right of way, I believe, and then right. when you can you can come on out. But right. 
Like, go ahead. I yeah, my, to no, that's okay. I don't my, know what they're like. I, my experience in driving in them is that they can be very confusing. And my, my complaint, frankly, has been the signage isn't always that great. I've gone around a few times too, like, okay, which one of these do I take to get where I want to go? <laughs> so I just, I hope, well, I for one thing. I wonder about the yeah. bigger trucks now. I'm not quite sure how big it you will, can be on Highway 88. I'm not sure if you can pull doubles. Yes. Like well, we've asked Gary about that, and um, he said absolutely uh, double doubles can get around there. Slowly, they're not going to zoom around, <laughs> but then to some people that's part of the appeal too, okay. is having them slow down. So um, I also know a number of people who are very opposed to roundabouts, and they'd rather have another traffic light or something. I wish you'd go ahead and put them in and down in uh, Southern California. We could find out what they're like and then uh, <laughs> maybe import them up here. There you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sherry, what else is going on? This is Lynn, but that's okay. I'm sorry. Not a problem. Um, we are looking forward to inviting a couple of more interesting uh, county people to our next couple of meetings. In our April meeting, we hope to have, I believe his name is Mark Benini, who is okay, our yeah. county uh, probation officer, to talk to us about the impacts on the probation workload since the shift of state prisoners sort of to the right. county levels. The realignment. Right, the realignment. And we expect, we've been told by the sheriff who visited us last meeting, that the biggest impact is on probation, on the probation office. So right, we'll, it is. They, were the, they wind up being the lead agency because they see the, uh, the people, prisoners coming in and uh, deciding whether, you know, how to possibly plead. Exactly. And then uh, after they, uh, if they have to do any time, whether or not they go on a probation time or the other time. Uh, exactly. Richard Forster was seen to be somewhat concerned about um, sending it back, the monies that the state was bringing back in, and also that uh, it doesn't seem to be working out in quite a lot of the counties. Uh, that's what the, sh the sheriff uh, shared with us also, although frankly so far, thankfully, the impact the negative impact on our county has not been huge. Okay. Our our jail is um, is got above its capacity right now, but not it's not like five per bed or something. Right, and I've heard other other uh, counties, the uh, sheriffs saying that you know they're the the uh, now the deputies that work in the in the I guess the prison county prisons now you know they weren't trained to or the the, the jails aren't made for people to be in there for more than a year and right. things like that so it's there's uh, some difficulties there as well I've heard that too okay, and then but that'll the, be interesting if you want to talk to uh, talk to uh, Mr. Benini he's uh, very informed we're looking forward to it and then we also hope to have Maureen Funk the head of the Amador Council on Tourism to talk to us in the future since uh, her organization received a lot of the ta the TOT money that we voted in the uh, right. occupancy track yes tax? yes right. uh, the the Board of Supervisors uh, has awarded most of it to her organization so we want to hear what her plans are and then we thought we would probably uh, invite our local CHP officer just to give us an update on Highway 88 and, uh, you know, how things are up there. Uh, the snow that we had a couple weeks ago really caused... It always, it always sounds to me like, <laughs> you know, residents always want everybody to slow down on the roads. Right, of okay. course. And, uh, and I guess, the, you know, they picture the visitors, uh, you know, want to go really fast on it. I've, <laughs> I've noticed that it seems to me like whether you're a resident or a visitor, if you're going a short time... You know, you pull right out, and uh, and you just drive slow, fast, or whatever. But if you're a, a person that's driving a long distance, you know, you generally wait and make sure that it's clear and you get in, and uh, and then you drive the way that you drive. But I've noticed that whether or not you're pulling in really fast or whatever is, uh, you know, usually that person that just pulled in, he goes down about a block and a half and then turns then off. Then turns off. I know. <laughs> I know it seems funny, like, were you in such a hurry? <laughs> okay. And, well, we're running out. And okay. in, uh, go ahead and invite people to your meeting. At Absolutely. Please, everybody is welcome. And it's next Monday night, March 11th, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Veterans Memorial Hall on Buckhorn Ridge Road in Pioneer. Okay. And if you haven't been up country, you know, I'm surprised sometimes people here in Amateur County, you know, in the lower... They don't really go up there as often as maybe they could. I'm surprised and, at that, too. And it's just beautiful. Yes, okay, we're going to take you. our break, and we'll be back right after this. You're watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, PSPN.